Join us for CBLT Morning. Between 7 and 9 tomorrow. Going to the beach has always been fun, no matter how you get there. But getting to this beach is a lot easier and safer for most Torontonians. It's the 17th annual volleyball tournament at the oldest club in East Toronto, the Balmy Beach Club. Over 90 teams have been invited, some from the strangest destinations. But no one seems to mind because everyone's here for one reason, to have a good time. Please get your teams down on the beach. Get ready to play, ladies and gentlemen. See that line? See that line? It's that's, not great. That's true. That's true. Move it. Move it. Move it. Move it. Move it. Move it. Course number three right now. Red Devil and the Swallow. I, as a student at Malvern Collegiate, I used to come here for some peace and quiet. It'd be pretty hard to do that in a day like this when people are having so much fun. It's a lot always like this at the beach. Of course, it's not the way it was when I was a student. The beach has changed. But it's managed to retain those unique characteristics that set it apart from all other Toronto neighborhoods. Right now. you very boring joker. But, 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 Sire, if you find me a Portable's new game, you win. Portable's new game, you say? Sounds like world good fun. And with grand prizes, fit for the king. You can't hide from me, joker. I'll find you. When you're looking for an electronic typewriter, You'll find quite a herd out there. But no matter how large the herd, it's easy to spot a leader. When it comes to memory capacity, experts agree the Xerox Memory Writer is unforgettable. This frantic celebration can be a bit bewildering to the local beachers. But then, most have grown used to it. For over a century, this lakeside community has attracted people, first as a cottage resort, and then as an amusement park. Today, it's home to 20,000 people, most of whom have watched their neighborhood blossom into a most attractive residential area. In fact, real estate agents try to enlarge the area boundaries to induce a quick sale. But it doesn't sit well with the longtime residents. They're emphatic. The beach is and always will be between Woodbine and Victoria Park Avenues, south from Kingston Road to the lake. Belfair United Church is celebrating its 80th anniversary of service in the beach. From its humble beginnings of open-air services and their early meetings in an old fire hall, the church today is characteristic of the spirit and continuing strength of the earliest beach residents. In attendance on this historic occasion is the Lieutenant Governor of Ontario, John Aird. Everybody was putting I found it stickers on their bumpers. Where you went? I found it. The Jewish community in Montreal sent me some bumper stickers they had made up, said we never lost it. <laughs> Eighty years ago, the sermon would have been quite different. 
perhaps an address praising Queen Victoria for her influence on the elementary school system, or a scathing attack on the evils of alcohol. Remarks that would have found an appreciative audience nodding in agreement. When Toronto was incorporated as a city 150 years ago, the earliest residents began settling in the beach. They were mostly fishermen and their families, living simple lives in cottages on the shores of the lake. By the end of the century, people from uptown were being lured to Kew Gardens, where meals, without spirituous liquors, of course, could be enjoyed along with speeches for 25 cents. When public transportation improved, two new parks opened, Monroe Park and Victoria Park. Visitors enjoyed carnival rides, vaudeville, and an ever-present brass band for those bold enough to dance. But the biggest attraction began in 1907 when the Toronto Street Railway Company opened Scarborough Beach Amusement Park. With unique rides like Shoot the Chutes, it was at one time considered to be the best park in the country. When it was dismantled in 1925, some old residents claim it was at that moment the real spirit left the beach. Developers moved in and suddenly Toronto's playground took on a new look. Homes replaced the rides and the first beach real estate boom was underway. And the early cottages on the beach? They were expropriated by the Toronto Harbour Commission. Some were moved, many were demolished, and attention turned to improving the beach itself. Piers were built to stop land erosion, and a permanent boardwalk was eventually constructed from the foot of Silver Birch Avenue west to Ashbridge's Bay. Today, the boardwalk is the main attraction, and to the locals, Sunday feels like an invasion. Even when it's jammed in a summer weekend, it's fun to walk along the wooden boards and inevitably bump into someone you know. There's an atmosphere here which is unlike any other walk in the city. The breezes are cool and the lake itself is soothing. And attractive even in winter, when bathers are replaced by the ice tossed up by the waves. Down the street! Up the street! Clap for that one, that's hard. <laughs> up the street! Oh, thank you. Was there a spirit that died with the passing of the old amusement parks? I don't think so. The water's still here, the trees, the ravines, and they were more important than any of the carny of the amusement park. And people still come here to the boardwalk by the thousands on the weekends and by the ones and twos during the week. The beach has that feeling of being a, a secure and an isolated community, even though it's part of a, a much larger city. It really has that small town feeling about it. I was so surprised when I came down. And as I walked along the street, if I smiled, everybody smiled. And if I didn't smile, they seemed to look at me as much as to say, what's the matter, you're not smiling. They were so friendly. I was very happy to be associated with the beach neighborhood. Jerry Schwamm is a friend to seniors in the beach. Unlike many residents who've lived their whole lives here, she's not a native beacher, but only came when she left Toronto's West End 35 years ago. When I was a wee tot, and we lived out in the Sunnyside District, I never thought I would be coming down here, and now I'm a beach girl. Actually, I shouldn't say that. Let me put that a different way. Let me say I am a Torontonian, but I love the beach. And of course, the lake. Oh, that's my pride and joy. I just love that lake because some time ago my dad was captain on the Dalhousie City and we used to travel on that Dalhousie City so that if I ever had to move away from the lake, I think my heart would be broken. This is the Glen Manor Ravine. It's not the only ravine in the beaches. In fact, there's a number of them and they crisscross the community, but it's by far the most magnificent. It's hard to believe that you're actually right in the middle of a city here, a place where you could get away from everything, from all of that noise, 
and actually be by yourself in the cities out there. When I was a boy, I used to play chase down here with my friends all the time. And I'd get fence posts with my father from some of the fallen timber. And I noticed my son wants to carry on the tradition. Every time that he comes to visit his grandparents, or just up the way, he insists on in coming down to the ravine. You can't blame him. Only a block north of the boardwalk lies the heart of the beach, Queen Street. It's hard for me to believe it's the same street I knew so well such a short time ago. My father would take me up to the Danforth, Jack Fraser's in the Danforth, to buy a suit, down to Simpson's to buy shoes, and anywhere but the beach to buy a good meal in a restaurant. But on the weekends, the Queen Strip would be crowded with unfamiliar faces from other parts of town who came here to look at the secondhand shops and at the bookshops, maybe buy a mellow roll in the drugstore. Even mellow rolls were hard to buy on Sunday, but today, Sunday's a big day in the beach. Most of the shops are open, contrary to the existing Lord's Day Act, and attract huge crowds of people. The whole face of the street has changed. Stores are distinctly beachy in appearance, style, and name. These are success stories. Places like Stoneworks, one of the original new stores which has expanded from its early days, to now include clothes and curiosities from around the world. Bimini, now six years old, is an attractive clothing store that draws rave reviews for its window displays. It was the first jean store on the beach, starting simply enough to outfit a casual neighborhood. But today it's more casual chic, offering expensive designer labels. Co-owner Aldous Blodans is a Vancouver transplant, who along with his wife Marilee Marshall recognized the potential of Queen Street. Now confirmed beachers themselves, They've had to hire nearly a dozen extra sales staff. Weekends are berserk. Uh, probably without our weekends, we, we wouldn't be where we are right now. We do at least 50% of our business on Saturdays and Sundays. And uh, the pace uh, triples, I would think. We need, you know, 10 people in the store to manage the place. And there's lineups and everything else. And uh, thank God uh, we wouldn't be where we are here today without these people. Although the, 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 our neighbors, the beaches people, always supported us through the weekdays and always supported us through the winter time. The windows initially were about <laughs> half the size. We had to paint them in because we didn't have enough inventory to put in the windows as well to keep the store stock. So we've grown. The window displays at the Toy Circus attracted different crowds. Beach resident and owner Jean Siskolny started the store in 1976 out of necessity. I uh, had uh, a birthday party for one of my daughters um, to go to and uh, tried to buy a kite uh, in the neighborhood and wasn't able to do that. And I uh, found that I had to go downtown to get exactly what I wanted, which uh, didn't make much sense to me because I lived here and I thought I should be able to shop here. So um, later that night, I woke up in the middle of the night and I uh, thought, hey, that's what the beach needs, is a toy store. So I went ahead and did it. I know you want to sit beside the store. It's been a hugely successful neighborhood store. Children drop in after school, where they're encouraged to play with a wide range of toys and read the latest in kids' books. But curiously, the success of the toy circus and other shops in Queen Street has brought about a common fear among the store owners themselves that commercial success may ruin the character of the neighborhood. I want it to stay the way it is, but to have a more viable commercial district than we used to have. But I want the nature of the, the community to stay the same. And I think it's up to, uh, to business people and to the, to the residents to maintain it that way. I think we all have to monitor it so that it doesn't become a Yorkville. It's very important. You take the Neville 501 streetcar out to the beach about half an hour ride from Queen and Young to the end of the line at the Neville Loop. Beach residents have had their complaints about the noise of the new cars and the seemingly constant track maintenance. But most of them count in the service and relish the time to relax over the morning newspaper, chat with friends, or just watch the street go by. When they extended the transit service to the heart of the beaches in 1897, people objected to the new fare system they were going to implement. And what they did is they pulled up the streetcar tracks. And I think that really catches the essence of the beach. The beach has a history of fighting to try and protect itself. It's fought off an expressway, 
It's fought to make sure the island airport doesn't expand. It's fought to save a wooden footbridge from becoming a place for automobiles. It's fights like those that show the character of the beach. People aren't opposed to change. They just want to make sure that when change does come, it manages to enhance the characteristics of the beach. Leading off the second inning, Mullinix and Whip to follow. Blue Jays ahead here, one to nothing, leading the New York Yankees. What's traditionally been a wasp part of town is slowly changing its pace and attitudes. These older residents may remember the 1934 riots in Kew Gardens over Jews being allowed to swim in the lake. But it's unlikely these younger ones will ever encounter such social hostility. When a few years ago it became the place to live, the beach found itself shaking a long established image. An influx of young people moved here in the late 60s and 70s. Many stayed to mix easily with the older residents, and the new beachers willingly accepted some of the beach traditions. And although renovations to these old beach homes happened fast and furiously, few have changed the essential character of the original homes. Even the new houses being built today respect the style and character of the neighborhood. Of course, the most sought after homes are now far too expensive these days for most of us. But the classic old styles along Pine Crescent and Glen Manor reflect an era of elegance and style. Willie Molson and Susan Bellin have purchased a curious old cottage only a stone's throw from the water. They both think of themselves as uptown people. He is an accountant and she a store owner in the center of the city. Yet they consider themselves fortunate to have found a home in the beach in which to raise their young family. As far as we know, the house is about 120 years old. It was built as a cottage and we've been back to the archives, but the uh the house is older than the archives, so far as we know, so... We've, we've been looking, too, for photographs of the, the old building on the corner, three down, because that was uh, part of the Alexandra Hotel. And we're hoping we can find a shot there that will show this one in the background, but so far we haven't come up with anything. I guess all my life I've always wanted to live in a very beautiful place, some place where you'd wake up in the morning and you'd say, wow, this is so beautiful here, and... And for me, this is it. I've lived in many different countries, and as far as I'm concerned, if you're going to live in a big city, this is the most beautiful place you could possibly live. Uh, you, you have the lake, you have parks, you have uh, a village that's like a small town, and, and yet you're 10 minutes drive from downtown Toronto. What more could you ask for? Public schooling in the beach is as much a product of parental enthusiasm and involvement today as it's always been. Ten-year-old boys, ten-year-old boys, triple jump, please. If the parents of these kids went to school on the beach, their classmates might have been now famous film director Norman Jewison, or columnist Robert Fulford, or Bruce Kidd, world-class athlete. When I was young, my father was one of the few professionals in what was essentially a blue-collar neighborhood. But that's changed, too, along with the city. Now there's an abundance of writers, media people, and young professionals raising their families here. The Scotford Project. Technology of the future. Hundreds of Canadian companies were contracted to create Scotford. They all benefited economically. Many also gained invaluable expertise by creating a massive petrochemical plant and the world's most advanced refinery. Shell Canada, putting technology and people to work. Toronto, full of great entertainment, and it's all on the PTC. We got shows to see, our symphony, art and ice, even winter's nice. A museum grand, dancing to a band. We've got sights to see, all on the TTC. We've got movie screens, our hockey team, castle on a hill and skating trails. North galore, nights out and more, we've got sights to see, all on the TTC. Toronto's Entertainment Network. Whoa, what's doing, coach? I don't know. Got a headache, pain around my eyes, stuffed up nose. I think it's a cold. That sounds like sinus trouble. Ever try sinus tap? Here. 
It's made to relieve sinus symptoms because Sinutab is a sinus congestion specialist. Hey, Coach, how's the Sinutab work? Great. Now if we could just get this defense working. Come on, defense! For 1985, the Oldsmobile Cutlass Sierra is joined by two new front drives. Introducing the car you must see, must drive. The all-new Oldsmobile Calais. Astonishing style outside, inside, and in its responsive performance. Plus, the luxurious new Oldsmobile 98 Regency. Oldsmobile for 1985. Until a few years ago, you couldn't buy a drink in the beach. Now there are a dozen licensed establishments along Queen Street. The change is welcomed by many, but has caused some worry among others. It's not that beachers are particularly against drinking, but probably they're worried that the patrons will make a display of themselves and not show the appropriate degree of reserve. No chance customers drink too much here, unless it's a milkshake or a soda pop. The Garden Gate restaurant looks, sounds, and in fact is the same as I remember it as a boy. It's a beach institution since it started in 52 and it's fed customers with a style all its own. How about a Chinese combination plate for 325? Egg rolls are still 50 cents. And when you go, be prepared for a wait. There's always a lineup. To find it, ask for directions to the goof. That's the name that stuck ever since some of the neon lights burned out in good food. Several blocks away and light years different in style is Summer's Restaurant, which opened in 1982 in a renovated bank building. It's expensive white linen and pink neon, but still the casual beach style, with a menu offering exotic dishes previously unheard of in the beach. Can I get one more for Sealy, please? Today, there are many good restaurants in the area, all well attended by beachers and visitors alike. So I lost a fortune on the beachers market, I couldn't believe it. That's why we're drinking Sans Emilion, but I've done as well as I hope to. <laughs> the area has finally established its own high standards for gourmet dining. It's another Friday night at the Willow Fish and Chips where owner Ron Bruce has served thousands of happy customers in a style all his own. Golden brown. It's takeout par excellence with a friendly flair. Hi, Ron. How Hi. Are how are you tonight? Oh, not bad. Can I have four and two, please? Four, four and two? two? Oh, okay, sure. Sure. I have a lot of people ask me why I've remained here for 35 years. That's making good English fish and chips using fresh potatoes every day and good halibut from Alaska. And number one fat, that's what produces a first class product. Notoriety has reaped its toll, but Ron has managed to take it all in stride. For 35 years, no vacation. So I decided I'd go to the West Coast. On the way down on the boat, a customer came up to me, tapped me on the shoulder. He said, how about two orders of fish and chips? I said, oh my golly, I can't get away from it. <laughs> Maybe it's the fresh air and the lure of the lake. But it seems like everyone in the neighborhood enjoys the sport. If you don't ride a bike, you jog. And if you don't play a game, you're probably a fan. Friday night, and the place to be is here watching fastball at Kew Gardens used to be that this is the best fastball in Canada, and we had the likes of Bill Dernan and Bobby Porter, stars like that playing here. Now it's still pretty good, and still a community event. Yeah. They even take up a collection, They've always done that. The guy out in center field can't seem to work the scoreboard right, but everybody's here having a good time watching their friends out in the field. Of course there are no reserve seats, no beer in the stadium, no dome over it. This is a game about neighborhood entertainment, people having fun together in their own community. And if you hit a home run here, you get a free chicken dinner at a neighborhood restaurant. Now that's what I call community. The neighborhood is proud of its athletic tradition. In fact, the old Balmy Beach Club, which has survived two fires since it began in 1905, is a local sports hall of fame. At 
72 years of age, Joe McNulty still laces on the skates for a rough game of hockey with the boys and is one of the paddling coaches at the club. He cleaned off the beachside tennis courts to pay for his first membership in 1927, and he's been actively involved ever since. Inside, the walls are filled with old memories. Faded photographs of another era, the opening of the bowling lawn, the first rugby teams, paddlers who hosted the early club regattas, and others who became Olympic medalists. In the 20s and 30s, Balmy Beach was a powerhouse in Canadian football, led by Ted Reeve, Alex Ponton, and Scotty Kakel. Many became sports heroes across the country. And they were beachers, from a club that has been a witness to decades of community change. I don't think there's any place like it in the world. It's the most beautiful place in God's green earth. We were like a village down here, or a community in itself. I appreciated it much more when I was younger. We, you know, we could walk from Neville Park to Woodbine and know everybody. No, we just... They're different people, but they're like us, I guess. <laughs> uh, we have to adjust. And of course, we're a bit proud. It's maybe selfish, you know, but uh, we like this country down here. Now it's um, saturated with, we used to have maybe four or 5,000 in the old days come down the beach. Now we're getting 30,000, uh, 40,000 along the lake shore. It's just tremendous. And um, uh, I guess we shouldn't be so selfish and, you know, uh, let them utilize some of our great facilities in the city here too, but we loved it. It was our country, and then we thought we owned it. I think we still do, but... <laughs> As Joe McNulty would agree, the true spirit of the beach runs deep. It's moved the neighborhood to acknowledge, once you're a beacher, always a beacher. Read about more neighborhoods in the November edition of Toronto Life magazine on newsstands now.